Hi, Trevor here, reflecting on laughter music. Thank you for stopping by. Well, coming again today, you're very, very welcome. I trust you enjoyed my last video on uh, stage band mastermind James Last. So this is old over 200 million albums, so very, very successful in the scheme of things. How we modernise the stage band, bringing in massive drums and guitars and all sorts of bits and pieces. Music goes a lot to that guy, so it's good to give him a bit of a go. We're going from there to 1948 in Boston, Massachusetts. Um, when often, if you're confident, say you've got a voice like this guy, it's an absolute massive compliment. Compliment. Now, he's got English and Scottish descent, even though he's born in the United States. But it was around, uh, in his early childhood, the family moved to North Carolina. And he settled in a place called Morgan Creek. And uh, he, he looks back on those days and thinks, that's informed to me, not so much around people, but around landscape and climate. And, and just the peace and tranquility of all of that. And this has well and truly informed this guy's career and songwriting ever since. Uh, he learned the cello at an early age, but then it moved guitar to guitar. The guy we're talking about is our iconic James Taylor. Now, James's brother, who kind of encouraged him a little bit in those in his early early day, uh, days, talked about James's natural phrasing, the ability to put the words in just the right order and just the right speed, and his use of syllables, absolutely stunning. It's one thing to actually write a song, it's another thing to actually work out how the words are going to flow in that song. It can be a bit of an art form, where do you take your breath, all that sort of thing. And because of that encouragement, James wrote his first song around the age of 14. Um, he was encouraged to move to New York um, in the 1966, and he did form a band over there and became a regular performer at the Night Owl Cafe. Um, it's around that time, though, that things are coming a little bit unstuck. We are talking the late 1960s. You know what happened at that time. New York City, drugs. And so James Taylor had a bit of a, an interesting and tenuous relationship with drugs through that time in particular. Uh, but meanwhile, over the other side um, in the United Kingdom, uh, the Beatles are starting to finish up. And they, they, they started this uh, record label, Apple Records. Now... <laughs> There has been obviously Apple Computers, Apple Records. There's been a bit of a fight between those two things. Uh, really, really, the power of the powers, and both of those are lots of weight. Um, Peter Asher had a lot to do with Apple Records at the start, and uh, when they when they heard the song "Something" in the way she moves, uh, this song was actually written by James Taylor. And when Paul McCartney heard that, he thought, "Wow, what a fantastic song that one is." I mean, to actually be told by Paul McCartney, this song's pretty good, there's just something in that, because he's song writing, royal, song at rising royalty, as we know. And so because of that, so James Taylor was the first non-UK artist to be signed by Apple Records, so that's very, very significant indeed. And that led to the release of his 1968 self-titled album. So off that album, we do have um, something. Uh, it's a slightly different tune to what you would do in the George Harrison version. Um, but, you know, that's the original guy singing his song. So absolutely, we have to put that one in there. 1969, he performed in the Newport Folk Festival. And many people um, actually hang around in the rain to actually watch that performance. Of course, just a few years earlier, it was um, Bob Dylan who famously put down the acoustic guitar and picked up the electric one and changed the music forever. And that paved the way for many artists after him. It was around that time James was involved in a motorcycle accident and he broke both his hands and his feet. <laughs> both hands and feet, right? my goodness. And um, while he was recovering, he was still writing songs and around 1970 out came the album Sweet Baby James. Now this um, is considered a folk rock masterpiece, this album. This is a very, very significant album indeed. Um, it sold around 1.5 million albums in its first year and it's just an absolutely incredibly influential album this one really well pretty much capitalized James Taylor 
into the into superstardom at this point. Of course, you can't talk about James Taylor and not talk about the song that went to number three um, in 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 America, and that's the song "Fire and Rain." This song was all about his trying to overcome drug addiction, and you know, I've seen fire, I've seen rain, I've seen days when I could not find a friend. But I long to see you, baby. Again, there's just so much going on here. These lyrics are very, very poignant and very, very raw indeed. And, you know, the world really does respond well to um, rawness and poignancy, absolutely. Fire and rain. I've seen fire. I've seen rain. Um, these two things are at the opposite side of the spectrum, aren't they? We've got the fire. We've got the heat. We've got the ferocity of fire. It burns. It's not very nice. Then we got rain. Now rain can be very soothing, you know, if it's it, if it um, has been dry for a while and the rain comes down, it's pretty pretty exciting to see just the ground change. I know in Australia we've got Lake Eyre. Lake Eyre does not have water in it very often, but when it does, it's absolutely a wonderful thing to see people flock up there to see it. Rain also can be stormy. And I think in a philosophical sense, it's not a sunny day, it's a rainy day. It's not necessarily a good time of life. Um, and so when you put fire and rain together, it's not a very good place at all. You'd hope that maybe the rain would put the fire out. Well, it's not. <laughs> and I think, you know, we all have these times of life, don't we? When we do feel fire, we do feel rain, we think, oh my goodness, where have my friends gone? As this song goes on to say, they're just non-existent. And we think, how on earth are we going to get through these times? Well, as James Taylor discovered, and of course, when he had a massive hit on his hands, that this would have helped, that when you can talk about it, sing about it, write a song about it, it makes a really, really big difference. And, you know, he, he, he I do have a live version from 1970 and from one from 1993 in the description below. And so, you know, he's not scared to play this song. And there's something quite honest about that as well and that is hey i'm not going to hide that the fact that those times didn't exist but more importantly i've learned what to do with those times how to get through those times and how to keep going and i think as i've said a few times now if we don't learn from hard times hard times are hard right they're hard we need to be able to get something out of it so we get learnings out of it in the hard times. So maybe we can get through that. I've seen fire, I've seen rain, and I remember days when I had no friends, but I just longed to see you again. I think um, if we don't learn from the sessions, well, they become a wasted opportunity, don't, don't they? Many a song has been written through the hard times, and we seem to resonate as human beings with hard times. And, and we just all understand it as human beings that hard is hard, but we've got to learn what can we learn from at it. Now, if you think about a broken up relationship for a second year, you're in love and now you're not, that sort of thing. Don't think about the interaction with the person. Think about your interaction with love. What have you learned about love uh, that you can carry forward into your future? So we've always got to learn from the fire and Ray Munch, just as James Taylor, I believe, did when he wrote this song. So we've got a live version, 1970 and 1993. James Taylor, he's just got he's just got a silky smooth voice, really. He's got a beautiful picking guitar style, which was very much informed by his cello playing and a bit of piano, piano when he was playing. He said, well, a piano, you pick a piano. So I'm just going to do the same thing with the guitar. And it really just suits Fire and Rain so, so well. Out in 1971, we had Mudslide, Slim and and the Blue Horizon. Uh, this was a massive album again for James Taylor. And here we've got uh, James Taylor and Carol singing, singing, You Got a Friend. Um, Carol King wrote this one. James Taylor, absolutely, um, it was a massive song for him. And it's great to see both James and Carol on stage singing this one together. These guys did um, hook up for a little bit of time as well. And it's good to see, you know, they're singing a song that's one of the best songs ever, really, in so many ways. You've got a friend. Um, at 1975, uh, the album Gorilla, and we've got How Sweet It Is To Be Loved By You. A Marvin Gaye hit, but, you know, again, James Taylor made this song 
is absolutely his own. It just suits him so well. Beautiful live clip, this one, a little bit more upbeat for James Taylor. He just has such a real presence and an amazing voice about him. It's a live version of how sweet it is to be loved by you. Between 1968 and 2020, how long is that career? That's like 52 years, a long, long time. 20 studio albums, 4 live albums, 7 compilation albums, 7 video albums, 15 music videos, 1 EP, 42 singles. James Taylor estimated to have sold 100 million albums. That's a lot. Again, context, Beatles 600 million, Elton John 300 million, 100 million albums. So very, very big in the scheme of things and absolutely James Taylor has been very, very influential indeed. Uh, he's received six Grammy Awards from multiple no nominations all the way back to 1971 all the way through to 2021. So that's a long career. 1995, honorary doctorate from Berkeley College. Pretty cool, that one. Year 2000, a very big year. Um, inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And we've got, um, and it was Paul McCartney that actually inducted uh, James into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I thought I'd put in James's acceptance speech in the description below. Also inducted into the Songwriting Hall of Fame. He's received um, a Lifetime Achievement Award from Ira and George Gershwin Award. 2004, he was regarded number 84 of the 100 Greatest Artists of All Time from Rolling Stone. 2015, Presidential Medal of Freedom. Um, 2016, um, the Kennedy Center Honours. So that's a very, very big deal to be acknowledged there. People such as Sesame Street. Um, Stairway to Heaven, Led Zeppelin, Billy Joel, uh, to be honoured by the Kennedy Centre means you're an absolute national treasure. And so it was good to see James get the nod there as well. So I've seen fire, I've seen rain, lovely. What are you going to do with it? That's the challenge of uh, James Taylor today. So the links to those six videos in the description below, and I've also included my last video. From James Last. So if you want to recap on him, feel free. So here's we go. We go from big band, big stage band stuff through to soft pop folk kind of rock kind of vibe, which is James Taylor. We do everything in this channel. Absolutely. And we are getting close to the 550 videos too. So you know we're still going. <laughs> Absolutely. And we still got plenty of content to come. We're still in J. So so um so for those who've come back for another one, or this is your first time. Great to see everybody here. Um, that's it for today. Next time, we're going to get on to Jamie Callum. So, until then, I'll catch you around. Bye for now. <laughs>